Hello everybody, I've got this JBL 515 XT on the bench. It's a warranty repair sent back by a customer because it was blown up. And interestingly enough, it blew up exactly the same way as it did originally when I first got it <coughs> and first repaired it. Now, what it is, is the LF drive down here, the transistors are blowing. And I wondered about this before because I've had, had this happen a couple of times before. And I spent nearly a whole day trying to work out what it is, and now I think I know. And this is a useful video because you'll be able to um, just see how we check speakers here. And it might help you to decide whether you have actually got a Duff bass driver or a tweeter or not. And it can be quite a subtle thing. And at the moment, if I send this back, the customer will get some sound out of it and it will sound sort of okay, but not quite right, but it will still blow the LF drivers. Now I've tested this at full power for a long time. This is good. And then I connected it up to my suspect test speaker and with half an hour it blew again. So I've actually fixed this twice now today, but I'm confident I found out what it is. So let's kind of have a look at the speakers now and then we'll do some measurements and I'll explain a bit about speakers if you don't know, because I looked online and there's not much on there about it and this could um, save your bacon so yeah let's get on with the speaker and have a look right so we've got this uh, small speaker let's use this as a standard to start with it's an edge pro medium range uh, basically mid-range speaker 50 watt one or something 260 ha <laughs> 130 really yeah actually it's really stiff you can tell whether it's a mid-range speaker because the cone is very well supported and not flexible like it would be with a a woofer or a, a speaker which was designed to cover the bass ranges but that's beside the point so this is supposed to be four ohms okay so if we just measure it with the up in the top right hand side there you can see the dm100 and c the mess tech meter on ohms and if i short these out together we get 0 0.6 0.5 ohms okay and now if we just put it across the terminals we get 3.6, which is pretty typical. You get a lower resistance reading when you're measuring with DC resistance rather than AC impedance. The speakers are quoted, measured in AC, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. And I'll explain to you the two speakers I've got here which are causing me problems, uh, which seem to work okay, but actually have an impedance issue. So this one's reading 3.3, 0.5 there, 0.5 there, so 3.4, so that's measuring uh, 2.9 ohms. Okay, so that's quite significantly less than the four ohms quoted on the packet. Now the meter I think is quite accurate because I've tried some low ohmage uh, resistors and it, and it works all right, so it's not the meter I don't think. It's just that we're measuring the DC impedance, oh, sorry, the DC resistance, not the AC impedance, all right? So that's that speaker there. Now if I get, we'll, we'll um, We've got 2.9 ohms on that, so we write that down so we can compare it to the actual impedance readings we're going to do. And I've got another speaker here. Right, so here's a 15 inch driver out of the JBL 515 XT. You can see her there, and if I just tilt it over, you can just see the label. And you can see it clearly, it says on there it's a 2 ohm, this one, made in the USA, California. So it's a politically correct speaker, the positive. Vol um, terminal is the large terminal, so you got a large one, one small one, and if I just measure that now, it's supposed to be two ohms, and I'll check my meter again to make sure it's tearing all right, or you want to call it, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, and if I just put that on there, we're getting two ohms on that one, so it's reading correct, but it's misleading because it should read less than that. Now if I just reach down onto the bench, you can't see it, but I've got a JBL speaker. This is one that's blowing things up. Same speaker as the one you can see in the picture. And we've got a DC impedance of 1.4. Okay, so it's reading 1.4, so it's 0.9. So there's something slightly wrong with that one. It works. It doesn't put out as much power or bass, but it's actually working. So what is wrong with that speaker? Well, you probably already guessed, but I'll show you anyway. So if we just go on to the, um, the LCR meter now, and we'll just do some measurements with LCR, and I'll show you the difference. Got the hand tech LCR meter now. Zoom in a little bit, you can see. Back on the original speaker, and then if we just uh, measure this, you see, the if you look at the bottom and left of the hand tech, dis hand tech display up there, 
where my on the end of my probe there it says 100 hertz so that's the test frequency so at this test frequency we get a reading of 3.916 which is pretty close to what it's supposed to be if we up the frequency slightly so we'll go up to a kilohertz this time you can actually hear the excitation in the speaker from the actual meter and we're getting 4.009 so at 1 kilohertz this is spot on impedance and if we measure the inductance there, just check the inductance. Uh, yeah, so we've got an inductance of 3.26 millihenries and 4 ohms. So note that inductance, okay? So there we are, that's that speaker there. It's a brand new speaker out the box. It's almost spot on in terms of the... Uh, you can see we're spot on in terms of the ohmage, the impedance, not the resistance. That actually measured 2.9 ohms DC, but we've got 4 ohms. AC, which is what the speaker is specified for, okay? So that's a good one. That one's a good one. If I get the other uh, jibble, jibble one, here's the big jibble, and then measure that. You can see you can hear the beep again. I think you can hear that, can't you? You've got 4.9, 4 4.5 ohms, which is really strange. Um, so there's something wrong with this one because it's supposed to be a 2 ohm speaker, but it is a bass speaker, okay, so let's think about this for a second. It's not supposed to be bass, so if we up, put that frequency down to 100 hertz, which is what it's supposed to be. There we are, 100 hertz. Put the probes back on. Look at that, we've got 1.9 ohms. So the impedance is dependent on the actual frequency. The AC impedance the speaker is specified is depending on the target frequency for use of the speaker. So we've got 1.9 ohms at um, 100 hertz, and let's just have a look at the, in the inductance. We've got 1.9, and we got 15.6 millihenries, right? 1.9, 15.6 millihenries. Let's write these down so I can actually review them afterwards, right? Now, the one that's the speaker that's been giving us the chip in the case to blow up the amplifier today that does work and does produce sound, we get at 100 hertz, we get 10 millihenries, right? 10.7 millihenries, and then if we look at the resistance or the impedance at 100 hertz. You've got 1.6 ohms, right? 1.6. So what that tells me is that um, we've got 1.6 ohms, and what was the inductance again? I'm yakking away here, not really listening to myself. That's the. There you got it. We've got 10 millihenries. Okay. So the good speaker is uh, 1.9 ohms, 15 millihenries. So there's some inductance there. The bad speaker is 1.6 and 10 millihenries. And what that tells you is that there's some shorted turns on the voice coil, okay? So you could put this speaker back in, the other speaker back in together. It works, doesn't sound quite right, but you'd say, all right, well, you know, maybe it's my ears today. Maybe, you know, maybe it's the input's not right or something like that. But actual fact, you've got some shorted turns on the speaker, which is a very big damping factor for the, uh, the speaker every time it tries to move it's acting like a motor and it's uh, the inductance is too low and as it moves the current through the shorted turns is induced and it's short circuit so it damps the movement of the cone and uh, the other one down there blows up amplifiers this one doesn't this one's got a knack of is rubbing but it, the actual voice coil is okay yeah, so to check your speaker, if you get something like 1.6 or 1.7 ohms after you've deducted the actual offset reading on your meter because of the when you short the tips out, you might get half an ohm. You need to deduct that from what you're measuring on the DC resistance of this thing. And you should get something like 1.6 to 1.8 ohms at 100 hertz with an LCR bridge. You get spot on 2 ohms, 1.96 ohms, which is correct, okay? Now the bad speaker is measuring uh, 1.2 ohms, 1.1, 1.2 ohms. And the actual uh, inductance is much lower as well. The the good one reads 16.6 millihenries, 15.6 millihenries. The bad one is 10 millihenries, okay? So shorted turns on that one down there. So if your speaker blows up and the LF drive goes, you need to make sure you check the speaker because if you have it repaired or put a new amp in, the chances are 
it will go again and I've just proven that by messing about all day on one single repair wondering why it blew up and because I have the speaker here from the customer it's the bass driver in that box down there which is working sounds more or less okay certainly from what I can tell in the office I haven't driven it up to full power but you can imagine when it starts to get chooching that uh, if you've got some shorted turns on your voice coil you get a lower DC resistance you get a lower AC uh, impedance and you get a much lower AC inductance because of the shorted turns and that overloads your output stage on your amplifier and it'll blow it up all right so hopefully I've given you some inkling or some indication how you can check these drivers and also other speakers and also if you can get hold of a, an LCR bridge like this one the old hand tech they're not that expensive actually but they are well worth the money because you can um, you can get another insight into what's going on also you can check your speaker impedance at the actual frequency it was designed to be used at so the mid-range one measured exactly four ohms at one kilohertz and the big old JBL speak we tested at 100 Hertz and it came up with two ohms almost exactly so if you're in speakers check them because you know you've got a speaker that doesn't sound quite right and you're not very happy with it and you know it's not very good well if you can check your speaker cones properly then you stand a much better chance of not having failures and also being more satisfied with the performance of your speakers because it will damage your amplifier all right so thanks very much for watching if you like that <laughs> i don't know if you do not then uh hit the titty button down the right corner and if you've got some jbl speakers to repair good luck